campus. SUNY IT utilizes New York Alert. It's a system that's used by many agencies and, and all the SUNY schools throughout the, uh, the state. And again, this link will be there. I do ask that um, our students please enroll themselves to SUNY uh, New York Alert, but also to utilize your parent. If they want to have that information, they can log in through their student to, to sign up for New York Alert as well. It could be weather emergencies, national uh, or regional disasters that affect us. It could be an emergency on campus, but it's a way for you to know what's going on quickly around uh, this region of the, of the state. So, and questions, I'll take them afterwards. If anybody's got questions from University of Police, I'll be around after we uh, Several tiers to try to uh, provide safety. We've got blue light phones scattered around the campus. Um, directly coming into the University Police Office, as well as throughout many of our buildings, we've got emergency phones, again, piping directly back into the University Police Office. So if there isn't, you know, uh, hopefully, too many students, uh, you know, we have no visitors that can uh, say that they can't find a way to get a hold of us. Our telephone number is posted on the entry of every door on campus, so again, if you don't know the number, it's, it's within walking distance to find that out. And as I just mentioned, parking permits, we'll get those to you. Um, if you're a visitor to campus in the future when the semester starts up but you're not the student, please stop to our office. We do want to know who's on our campus and we'll, of course, issue parking permits or parking tickets. And the last thing we want to do is say, welcome to SUNY IT to come see your um, son, daughter, whoever, but here's your parking ticket. We like to avoid that. So um, please stop by our office. We'll get you a uh, you know, temporary pass for whatever period of time you're going to be here so we at least know who, who it is that's here and uh, avoid giving you a ticket. Uh, again, as any college, university, police department, we do a lot of programming. We work with our campus life office, our residential life office, and other offices, uh, the student affairs office, to do educational programs and training around campus. And that goes on. Excited we, about those the way we do. So, how many of you are already have already decided to live on campus? Come on, more hands. That's good. Great. We hope that more of you will at least consider it. We know that there are a lot of. Um, factors to consider when you decide whether you're living on campus or not. We want to tell you a little bit about it in case you're still pondering. Um, I have all of our residence halls listed here, but I want to highlight for you Adirondack. We've specifically reserved two buildings in Adirondack for transfer students. Um, feedback we've gotten is that the transfers really like to live together. If you don't want to live with transfer students, and there are also lots of good reasons to branch out and more quickly get to know other SUNY IT students, just let me know that and, and we wouldn't place you there. But we do have, we do have a block safe for transfers. Um, to highlight your options in the, in the future, in Mohawk we also have a gender inclusive option, which basically means that in one of our suites, um, men and women can live together in their own single bedrooms. But, but that is a new option for us that we're pretty excited about. Um, some amenities of Adirondack Hall, um, their suite style, most of them are single. It was, single rooms they were renovated um, this fall so it's in fact the buildings that transfers will be in are are being renovated right now um, we have a high-speed internet access um, we also have the um, ethernet ports in each room um, the laundry is included so you don't have to come with rolls of quarters like you do at some other institutions or have money loaded up on your car we've already got that covered for you um, we do provide local telephone service and cable TV services in Adirondack. Um, we have kitchenette, study rooms, common space for you. It's, it's, if you're still pondering the pros and cons of living on campus, it's easy to get to your classes um, and be able to use all those other options that we told you about earlier. And then you do have to have a meal plan when you live on campus, but Sodexo offers some really flexible options um, to make those meal plans work for you. There's a lot of support for you if you live on campus. We have professional live-in staff. Um, we've also placed a couple of RAs in Adirondack purposefully who were transfers themselves so that they can um, just be attentive, again, to that you don't have a sign on your head that says I might need to know a little bit more than other sophomores, juniors, or seniors, but your RA would, would know that you might need to, a reminder about registration dates or those kind of things. Um, and then we do a lot of residential programming in collaboration with the Campus Life Office, in collaboration with faculty, um, and um, your housing fees also provide some extra programming money that's specific to students who live in the residence halls. 
the chief is going to talk a little bit more about safety and security than I am, but I, I do want to highlight that our professional and staff are trained in crisis management, they're trained in relationship management. Um, our buildings do require um, outside access with your SUNY IT card. Um, the, the doors um, notify university police if they're, if they're propped open and our staff attend to making sure that they get closed back up. Um, we're, we're all wired for fire safety. Um, we're smoke free in our residence halls and, and we have cameras in appropriate and helpful places to make sure that you're as safe as possible. If you are interested in living on campus um, and you haven't found it yet, the transfer student housing request is on our Residence Life homepage. You need to log into it using your SUNY IT account. So this will only work, this application, if you're logged directly into your SUNY IT Gmail. If you, if you have your SUNY IT Gmail forwarded to a personal email address, it's not going to work. So make sure that you do that. And if you have any difficulty with the form, you just give us a call and we'll, we'll walk you through it. Um, we want to make sure, in conjunction with housing, in conjunction with your academics, everything, that if you need assistance related to disability services, um, you know that we have a great full service office. Um, you need to self-identify if you have a, a disability, whether it's visible or not visible, um, and advocate for yourself. The, our disabilities um, coordinator will work with you on a plan. They'll help you get it all written out so that you can present it to your faculty. And again, that's another place where you communicate as much as you feel that you need to with your faculty. Sir, all things have to be offered in insurance plans. So um, we're not sure the exact rate of what the health insurance for the, the college policy is going to be, uh, but it'll probably be around the five six hundred dollar range. Um, and again, this is because there are certain requirements now that have to be in all health insurance plans under the new regulations. Okay, so in summary, again, you pay a mandatory health fee that entitles you to all of our services. Um, and the other thing too, again, just make sure of is turn in your health requirements and, and please try and do that by August 15th. Um, there's a little bit of leeway with the physical, but it's really important to get those um, measles, mumps, and rubella information in on time. Okay. Okay, so on to our counseling center. Um, we do have a counseling center. It's located, again, in the same location. We're in um, Ariskeny Hall, Suite B. We have two mental health counselors available to you. Um, and they, they can do many different things. And, and a lot of times I think that we think that counseling has to be for just crisis situations. But really, um, in reality, even currently, a lot of the students that come and see our counseling center, it's just sometimes it's adjustment. It's going to be adjustment coming into uh, college, into another college. You got used to the last college, or it might be you were at home before and now you're living on campus. Whatever it could be, it could be adjustment issues, it could be just stress and, and trying to get through. Um, there also could be, of course, some you know tragedy that could happen through the semester, an illness, something like that that you might really need to speak with someone about in a confidential say, safe well, environment. I live in the area here. I have my own medical provider, or some people might say, well. I'm, you know, I'm living at home, I'm not living on campus, so I don't need that service or I would never use that service, but I would just like to make a note that sometimes this can be a very cost-effective way to get your health care because we don't collect co-pays or anything like that. So even if you have your own health insurance, um, you're on campus, you're not feeling well, you still can come into our office if you need over-the-counter medication or even prescription medication that we carry, and you wouldn't be paying co-pays or getting billed, we don't do anything with insurance. So still can be very cost-effective as long as you turn in your records to us, you can receive those services. Um, of course, we have health education, so uh, we have health counseling. I am a health educator, so I do um, this section here. Um, we have a health literature and resource room, so if, you need, if, you, if you'd like some information, free pamphlets, brochures, things like that on certain medical conditions, we can certainly help you with that. Um, we also provide alcohol substance abuse education um, and your health fairs and other type of community events on campus to really try and give you the most accurate, relevant health and wellness information that you need to stay well while you're a student here. I'm sure if you've already went in the bathrooms, a, a, a popular item of ours is our bathroom buzz flyer, which are the flyers in the bathroom that give you, and they're changed weekly, and they give you um, some health and wellness uh, information and tips. 
Okay, so mandatory health requirements. A lot of you have already come up to our to my table and we've talked about this, but and you've received the packets in the mail. Um, it is a New York State requirement that we need proof of immunization records. So we need measles, mumps, and rubella information. You can probably get this from your previous college or from your doctor's office. You might have a copy of it already. We need that. Um, the meningitis information form you also received, it's not a requirement currently to get meningitis vaccination. It's just a requirement to have turned in the form to say either I've had it or I chose not to have it at this time. But still, that's not a mandatory requirement to have had the vaccination. And then we need, if you're a full-time student, um, a health history and physical exam done within the last two years by a medical provider. Um, remember too, if you are a part-time student, you can still submit that physical form to us in order to receive our services. So that, you know, that is of course an option as well, even though it's not a requirement. It wouldn't automatically prompt you to do that. And the due date for that is August 15th. But a lot of you have already turned them in ahead of time, and that's great to get that out of the way and turn it in ahead of time. And then we would contact you if there's something that we're missing still. OK, so medical insurance. Um, all students pay a health fee, OK? And that's what I was talking about, the services that we provide. But this is different um, from medical insurance, OK? So there are two fees, and sometimes it can, this can get confusing. So as, as a registered student, you're charged a health fee. That's for all the services and things that you receive on campus. Um, now, the other thing would be medical insurance. Now, all college students are required by law to have health insurance, OK? So either you have your own health insurance plan, um, or you accept the college insurance plan, OK? Which I believe is still going to be there under negotiations right now, but I believe it was, it's currently United Healthcare, and it will probably continue to be that um, next year as well. Um, and so the difference between this is, is even if you have your own health insurance, remember that that does not mean you cannot use our services that we offer. This is just for state requirements that you have to have shown that you have some form of health insurance. So either you're going to put through the health insurance waiver, and how you do that is once you register for your classes today, it's in the banner system under personal information. You could click on there, and it'll say health insurance waiver. If you have your own health insurance, You'll want to do that waiver so that you don't put those charges on your bill, okay, for the health insurance. If you want to accept the college policy, you don't do anything. And it will, it will, you'll be accepted as the ins into the insurance plan, and those uh, charges will be on, on your bill. So we're putting this, how it's going to work. Uh, downtown Utica is about two miles away. Field house. The field house has uh, all kinds of stuff in it. 